Hey everyone, what's going on? Lee here. Today we're talking about the 10 best tools that are free that I use on an almost daily basis. So if you like what you see, please give me the thumbs up, consider hitting the subscribe button and also uh, jump down to the comment section if you've got any comments about these recommendations or if you've actually got a recommendation yourself that didn't make my top 10, jump down below, tell me what it is. I'm always interested to hear from you guys uh, with any recommendations that might help me and all of the other watchers um, with their daily tasks, okay? Or about increasing productivity, getting ideas, all these sort of good things that we need uh, to be working really, really well um, all the time. So as I say, we're talking about um, the top 10 and I'm going to flick through the 10 in this video. I'm not going to be doing a tutorial of those uh, tools. I'm just basically going to be flicking through them, uh, giving you uh, some of my uh, brief thoughts on them and moving along. Now, uh, there are some videos already on the channel that discuss some of these tools and I will be creating some more videos uh, to talk you through how to use some of these other tools. Okay. So let's get straight to the top 10. So the first tool is actually Canva. Now I talk about Canva a lot because it's so newbie friendly. It's a free cloud-based um, website that you can log in and you can create graphics. You log in, it's uh, very easy to use. You just choose what type of graph you wanna create, whether it's a YouTube thumbnail, an ebook, a social media post, you can see there's all these different things and you can just drag and drop images and graphics to create basically anything you need and then you can export it and use it where you want. So as I say, that is one of the best tools on the web today without a, without a shadow of a doubt. So the next thing is Evernote. Evernote is multi-purpose because it's um, on the browser, there's a uh, browser plugin and there's also um, a download there's a downloadable app for both your computer and also your mobile devices okay so Evernote is effectively it's an, an organizational tool for notes so you could use it as a word processor without all of the um, bells and whistles it's just a place where you can start typing all of your notes and you can organize these notes within what's called notebooks and because of that you can you can organize it and you can search for everything so it's really really cool but what makes this even best what I like what I use a lot is the browser um, extension so when you're going around websites, once you've got it installed, you can just right click, go down to the Evernote web clipper and click to uh, clip it. And you can save it, save that page as like a PDF or as a screenshot. Uh, there's a number of different options and they go straight into your Evernote um, filing system. So you can have a notebook for certain websites. So when you're doing research and then you can get, log into the app on your phone or using the app. See, I've got it here, I won't click on it because it's gonna go into some personal stuff. But, um, and you can then flick through all of the things that you've saved in a very organized manner. But you can, as I say, you can use it just for text. I use it a lot for when I'm writing different types of documents. Uh, just say it was a, you're writing a book, you could have different chapters, um, and then you can actually search for different things in the, in the search thing. So it's an incredibly powerful bit of software. It's if you haven't got it, it is, it is a definite top pick. Next one we're talking about is Trello. Now, uh, Trello is all about boards, um, planning, and organize and organ and organizing. Okay, and once you log in, you got a blank page, and what you can do is you can create different boards for different subjects. So it might be a board for. Um, a specific project like you've got here, the editorial calendar, or say this one that just flicks up, the sales pipeline. And then once you're within the board, you can create lists. So you can create, this one's this one's for progress, and then you can start, do, start adding um, items within the different lists. 
and you can put attachments, images, websites. Um, you can uh, attach these to different people that you're working with. So if they've got Trello, you can share these. You can go into the notes and you can mark them as being done. Um, but you can just use them as lists. I actually like to use Trello just as lists. So I might have, um, when in mine, I have things for like my, to say my personal life, um, ideas for, for work, ideas for YouTube videos, um, food that I want to cook, places I want to go and visit, um, and I basically recipes that I want to create, and then I just start creating creating these lists, and you can then go through them, you can drag them and drop them into different orders. Um, it's just a really really flexible tool um, that just takes the list building or the list making um, kind of methodology and taking it to that very next level uh, to really help you focus on what you're actually trying to achieve. Next one, pretty simple, is Skype. Now, I know for a lot of people, they think of Skype, they think of video calling. So they think of like, they always see it like uh, grandparents are talking to their grandkids in another country or whatever, and they've got a video chat. For me, it's all about the chat. Um, now, when I was a young youngster, we had this MSN Messenger, and all your mates kind of logged into it via their email, and you could just it was just a chat box sort of thing. This is effectively the same thing, and um, and we use it with our colleagues to kind of communicate uh, with our projects because you know we're all all around the world. Okay, so you're working like a lot of these projects. We're working with people in America, Europe. Uh, in Asia, and you know, we're at different time frames, and we're all following the same goal, but we need to be able to communicate quite quickly, and this is the best way. We can share documents, we can share our screens, we can do everything. It's so cool. Again, free, free as you like. Okay, next one, which kind of leads on from the, from Skype, really, is a way of sharing things. Now, this is Jing. Now, with Jing, what you can do is you can create screenshots in terms of images and videos and then share them now for me i've got it i've got it installed onto my on my mac here and i just click on i just click on the icon there click on capture and then i can choose part of the screen that i want to uh capture whether that's an image and i can choose the image here or the video and it will record five minutes worth of video and then it will upload it to the Jing website and then it will give me a link that I can just share to someone. So if I'm creating a quick tutorial or I'm trying to explain to someone something that I was trying to achieve or an idea, I can quickly create that video, share it with a colleague and they can watch what I was trying to do without us having to share screens and do it naturally um, at the time. Okay, So that's again another really, really cool, uh, cool tool. Next one, we're talking about Dropbox. Most people know about Dropbox. It's basically what a lot of people initially thought of as the cloud. It was a place to store uh, your files um, online and share them with someone else. So you might have something that's maybe slightly bigger than um, an image or an email or whatever. You can put it on here and then you can share it with people, but also you can create a link and then share that link with loads of people so loads of people can download it from your Dropbox. So it's a little, it's a drive that you can share things. You've got the same thing with Google Drive, does a similar sort of thing um, as Dropbox as well. Next thing, we've got Handbrake. Now Handbrake uh, is a uh, piece of software that you download onto your computer. Now what's cool about this is that it allows you to drastically reduce the file size of video. So we know that a lot of time we're creating videos online um, we're trying to create them in HD and we could end up with gigs and gigs of video gigs the file size can be a gig and you're like this is insane to try and upload to YouTube or whatever we can go into handbrake we can check a few of the settings just say like the uh, video quality bang that down a few notches and it will drastically reduce the file size without uh, making a noticeable difference on the actual video quality because when a video is encoded there's so many things that go on uh, to create that that code that some of them aren't as important as others okay so we can do things to reduce them uh, and resave it 
and then upload it. Okay, so I know when I've had videos that have been like nearly a gig and I've got them down to about 100 megabytes, which is that's 90% reduction in the file size. So when I try and upload it, it uploads quicker, it processes quicker, gets and it gets to people uh, a lot, lot quicker. Next thing, move, keeping with the, the, uh, the video theme, uh, we've got a plugin called VidIQ. Um, it, it's a really, really cool plugin, and what it does is it puts an overlay on when you're when you're accessing YouTube. You get this little uh, overlay here in the right-hand corner next to the video. It gives you so many stats about how it's been shared, um, sort of ad revenue that might have been populated. A lot of cool little stats there that can help you find keywords for your videos see what's actually ranking um, and help you rank your own videos okay so we move on to the last two now quickly google right and i'm not just saying google but google have some amazing apps and it's like they've got the collection i spoke about just a minute ago about google drive which is effectively like a dropbox but they've got so many things that are more than like your calendar and your Gmail um, and your drive. You've got the docs, the sheets, the forms, the slides. So you, it's basically like Microsoft Word back in the day. Um, you've got them for free. And not only are they for free, but they're in the cloud. They're connected to your Gmail account. So I can start writing a document all nicely formatted with pictures and however it would have been on a word processor. And it's automatically saving every couple of seconds because it's within the cloud. I can then turn the computer off, go to someone else's computer, log into my Gmail, hit the Google Docs button, and it brings up all of my Google Docs. I can then click on it and I can use it. And then I can continue editing it. I can open it up on my phone and I can continue editing it and then save it. And it just flicks between all these different devices, it's automatically being updated. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, there's so many good things with Google. Once you start looking into it, um, they have so many different free apps. I mean, another one that's really cool, which isn't part of this list, is uh, Google Photos. That's so not Google Images, which is part of the Google Search, Google Photos. And you can connect that onto your phone and it will basically upload all of your images that are on and video images and videos, images and videos, right? That are on your phone and it will automatically upload them to the Google Cloud. Infinite storage, infinite storage. I mean, from my phone, I've got about 25 gigs worth of stuff that I've taken on this phone alone. They're all backed up in the Google Photo Cloud, okay? In brilliant quality and they will be there forever. And I can then go th go to Google Photos, search through the images, download them again if I've lost them, if my phone dies on me or whatever, I've got all those images backed up in HD quality. All of those videos, hours and hours of videos that I've taken on my, my, uh, my kid and when we've been to Disneyland and when we've been to the football and all these sort of things, I've got them all backed up absolutely it's brilliant okay well worth checking out that google photos and that isn't even one of my 10 right realistically in terms of this number nine we were talking about the docs we were talking about the docs okay but anyway the last tool is bitly okay bitly.com awesome little um link manager now what we can do is we can log into this we've got a link for something it might be for a product it might be for a sales page it might be for a website whatever it is we can put that link in bitly it will then generate a very small link which will be bitly.com forward slash something or other a few little characters um and then we can share that right that's brilliant okay so it's made we might have had a very long link we now got a very short link but also what this does is once we log in, we get we get some we get some stats. They're fairly limited, okay, but they are what they are. It tells you how many people have clicked on it. It tells you what countries the links have come from, uh, the devices it's come from. So you can get a little bit of an idea about who is clicking on these links, where they're coming from. Like because you might want to know that a certain section of people are are clicking on it. Where are they clicking it from? Okay, so that's a really really important thing. So that's basically my 10 free tools uh, that I use on a daily basis and the 10 best tools I use on a daily basis that help me kind of navigate through the world of the internet, navigate myself through business and getting stuff done, organizing myself and creating stuff 
researching stuff. I mean, we've we've kind of gone through a wide range of things. I mean, for 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 people, if you've never used any of them, I'm sure it's a bit of an eye opener because there are some amazing tools out there um, that you can use for so many different things, and they're free and they're so incredibly useful. I hope that this video has been of benefit to you. As I say, I will create a few tutorial videos to talk you through some of these tools to show you a little bit more about them when I get a free moment. But in the meantime, I've been Lee. Uh, have a great day. Uh, remember to hit the comment section below. I'll see you soon.